Welcome to the Beast Rider Podcast. I am your host, Ryan Sakamoto, and tonight we are going to be discussing and breaking down Todd McShay's latest mock draft as it pertains to the San Francisco 49ers. So let's get started. Now, for those who are new to subscribing to my channel, thank you for tuning in. For those who already have subscribed to my channel, again, thank you too as well. For both of you, be sure to flip on the bell notification so you get notified when I go live or when I upload content. And again, I'm looking at my analytics and I noticed about 85% of you guys have yet to subscribe to my channel but still looking at all my stuffs and all my content. So I strongly encourage you to hit the subscribe button in the lower right hand corner of your screen and stay up to date on all things Beast in real time. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. We have a lot to talk about as it pertains to Todd McShay's latest mock draft, and here we go. So, for those who don't have ESPN Insider, obviously it's a subscription that you have to pay for, but don't worry, Beast has you covered. I'm going to break it down as it pertains to the San Francisco 49ers and Chicago Bears, and what he believes would be a swap of first-round picks where one team trades up and one team trades back and gains draft capital. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the value here and what Todd McShay had to say in his analysis. He says, Another trade. Four quarterbacks went in the first four picks, and in this scenario, the Bears didn't fully address quarterback through free agency or trade. That means it's now or never for Chicago, and it pulls the trigger on a move up the board in the middle of the first round. So what what gets it done? To land a number 12 pick from San Francisco, the Bears would have to send their own first rounder, number 20, and a second rounder, number 52, probably along with a 2022 first or second rounder. So basically a three-for-one deal where they exchange first-round picks and swap first-round picks, but then the Niners pick up a second rounder and possibly a first or second rounder next year. All right. He furthermore said this, this is more than the traditional than the traditional, excuse me, trade value chart expects. And whether that 2022 pick is of the day one or day two variety, would depend on how desperate Chicago is for the last true round one quarterback still out there. Niners GM John Lynch could maybe throw a mid-rounder back to the Bears to sweeten the deal to get it done. That's what Todd McShay said. So again, in his latest mock draft, that's where you see it. That's how he sees it playing out. And again, his mock draft is very similar to mine in that we're not being armchair GMs. We're making pit we're making picks or selections based on how we see the actual draft playing out. He believes as of right now, and as the draft board currently stands, based on draft position and so forth, without trades being made, that he thinks that the Chicago Bears would be moving up to number 12, eight spots, the Niners move back eight spots, and they pick up a quarterback Mac Jones out of Alabama because in his latest mock draft, and I could go into much into detail because again, That'll be unethical. That's why you have to pay for a subscription for it. But he has four quarterbacks, as he alluded to, drafted in the first four picks. Okay, so if that scenario plays out, he sees <laughs> Bears GM Ryan Pace playing panic button and in a panic attack and giving up the farm once again, like he did back in 2017 for a quarterback. That time it was Mitchell Trubisky, and we all know what happened there. Niners got Solomon Thomas, and yeah. So... Definitely the GMs, whoever, I'm sorry, the GMs, definitely GM John Lynch got the better end of that deal. And in this possible trade scenario, he gets him twice. Lightning strikes twice for GM John Lynch in a three for one deal in 2021. Now, could this play out? Absolutely. Because again, if you watch my earlier podcast that I wrote on my NFL mock draft 1.0, my own mock draft, I said that when the Bears were on the clock, that Ryan Pace is not the sharpest tool in the shed. And people will laugh at that because, again, I have a lot of Bears who follow me and subscribe to my channel. And they said, you're right. You know, my friend Robin said that. Um, my friend Vicky said that. My friend Danny. Uh, my friend Johnny said that. These are all people who are from Chicago. Two of them actually still live in Chicago. And they are saying that my analysis was spot on. Like, dude, no one likes Ryan Pace. And now we know why. But getting back to the specific... um. I shouldn't say no one likes Ryan Pace because I'm sure he has people inside that building that people like, but that 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 like him. But uh, no, I just think it's interesting because I don't think he's the smartest GM when it comes to evaluating talent, and that's just my analysis. So come at me, bro. But anyways, getting back to this specific deal, I think that GM John Lynch, for the second time in five years, fleeces his old buddy 
Ryan Pace. In this possible trade scenario, I, I'm laughing because it's funny because it, because it's true. Like when things, when you think things can actually play out, it's kind of funny. I don't know. Anyways, that's who Chicago Bears. Uh, that's who Todd McShay has the Chicago Bears taking is Mac Jones, um, giving up the farm basically uh, for Mac Jones to move up because Pace hits the panic button and all tier one quarterbacks are off the board. So with that being said, at number 20, what do the 49ers do, right? So they move back eight spots, let the draft unfold as it should, and they lose out on top offensive linemen off the board. I'm not going to name those players because, again, I'm not going to go through that. But in Todd McShay's latest mock draft, in this scenario, he has all top offensive linemen off the board. So then you have to go to a plan B option. He says at number 20, they select free safety Trayvon Morick out of TCU. And this is his analysis. Remember that excuse me, here, it start off like this. It goes, remember that we had the Niners shape back to this spot. The Garoppolo decision looms large for the Niners draft plan, and what happens there might not only keep San Francisco from trading down, but might even influence a trade up into the top 10. Yeah, I agree with that. For now, though, let's fixate on a secondary losing many pieces. Free safety Jimmy Ward is currently the only defensive back on the entire rest, roster under contract beyond next, next season. Perhaps the 49ers look to cornerbacks J.C. Horn out of South Carolina, or Aaron Robinson at a UCF. But the value and need of Morig is just too great to miss. He's my number 13 prospect and picked off six passes over the past two seasons. Well, that's the analysis from Todd McShay. And although I agree that defensive back is a concern, they already have Tervarius Moore there and they drafted him in the third round. So to think that they're not going to give him an opportunity to shine there, I think that's fool's gold. I think they roll with Jimmy Ward and Tarvarius Moore and continue that homegrown talent and then possibly pick up a bargain veteran seat, uh, veteran safety in free agency. Now, again, there's a lot of moving parts here, but that's how I see it playing out. I think the better play would be, and I can see the 49ers doing this. Again, this is based on how I think the 49ers GM John Lynch would actually do if he held the number 20, 20, 20th, back him talk, 20th overall pick. I think he would roll the dice on a J.C. Horn out of South Carolina, who's my number two ranked cornerback, and here's the reason why. Schematically, he fits the scheme. D'Amico Ryans is going to stay with that cover three Seattle Seahawks defense, keep everything in front of you, protect the sticks, don't get beat deep, right? And play your coverages accordingly, and use the boundary and the sideline as your friend and an extra defender. Now, these are things that J.C. Horn does extremely well, and although people have Caleb Farley ranked higher than J.C. Horn, I disagree. I think J.C. Horn is ranked higher than Caleb Farley. If you agree to disagree, that's fine. Um, people agree to disagree on Justin Gilbert when I say Jason Verrett was better than Justin Gilbert, and we all know how that turned out. Speaking of Jason Verrett, yeah, if they re-signed Jason Verrett, Jason Verrett teamed up with J.C. Horn, and you're all set. And then you got Emmanuel Mosley as a backup. I think, oh my gosh, I'm just joking. But now getting back to it, you know, I think J.C. Horn would be a nice addition in San Francisco and a nice find value pick where BPA meets need at pick number 20. Now, if you're saying, okay, well, J.C. Horn is not going to be the pick. Okay, then I'd flip to the offense side of the ball. If you don't want J.C. Horn, fine, man. Let's go with my draft crush from Alabama, Najee Harris. Because Najee Harris is mocked in my mock draft to go around this area. I think he's going to go anywhere from 15 to the 20, 25 range. And the reason the discrepancy, the, 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 excuse me, the reason the discrepancy is there is because again, you have to look at it from a schematic standpoint. Najee Harris is a power runner, but has a skill set for an outside inside zone team. That's my analysis on him. I've covered him for the better half of the last two years. I even covered him back in high school. Again, for those who don't know, he's a Bay Area kid coming from Antioch, Bay Area rooted. So Najee Harris is the real deal. He doesn't cower out of bounds. If you watch my analysis of him back on 2019, north-south violent running game, right? He loves to hurdle defensive backs, which he has proven to do. We all saw what happened in that Notre Dame game outside. When you rushed outside, bounced outside, boom, and then almost took it to the house. That was awesome, right? He also has a spin move. He can easily turn a three-yard loss into a three-yard gain. The guy does not go down on initial contact. And most importantly, he is a dual threat coming out of the flat. I am telling you, Najee Harris, who is my draft crush, and last year it was Justin Jefferson, 
that was my draft crush last year. And again, you check the YouTube Twitter receipts. It's all there. Everyone was hating on me. Not everyone. There's some of you that agree with me. Don't do it this time. And then now in hindsight, oh man, you're right about Justin. I'm telling you. Najee Harris is the truth, bro. And people say, oh, well, Travis Etienne is better. He might be better for the scheme, you know, because he's an inside-outside zone runner. He's more explosive. He can take it to the house. Hey, Najee Harris can do the same thing. Don't sleep on Najee Harris. Everyone wanted a comparison, a comp. Last year, people wanted a comp for Clyde edwards Elaire, and they wanted to know my thoughts on that. And I said Mark Ingram. And then Mark Ingram was on NFL Network a few days later, and then NFL Network compared Clyde edwards Elaire to who? Mark Ingram. So, what's going to happen this year? I'm just going to spit it to you. Najee Harris. Comparison. I'm telling you, bro. Piggyback on this. If you're watching and you want to piggyback on this analysis, I mean, you guys already do it anyways, but I'm saying it. Derrick Henry, man. Derrick Henry is my comp for him. And people are saying, oh, yeah, that's crazy, man. Derrick Henry, 2,000-yard rusher. Yeah. I'm not saying that he's going to be the next Derrick Henry. I'm just saying the unique skill set that he brings to the table is like Derrick Henry. And, of course, he also came from Alabama and wore number 22. Deuce, deuce. All right? So that's my comp. Those Both those players are top 15 talents, and they would fit where needs meets best player available, and that would be a great value pick at pick number 20. You also got to remember that the 49ers have yet to have a 1,000-yard rusher since Frank Gore left in 2014. And also, more importantly than that, the best availability is durability. And if you're not durable, then you're not going to be able to have a long, sustaining NFL career. If you look at the 49ers running backs, they cannot stay healthy. And that's not throwing shade at them. This is just facts, right? I'm spitting facts here. Can you really count on Raheem Morris? Can you really count on Jeff Wilson to not only fulfill his full 16-game schedule and be healthy, but then also a deep playoff run on top of that? They haven't proven to do it yet. And that's why this running back by committee approach, yeah, you can win in Kyle Shanahan's scheme with a no-namer running back. You can throw in me at running back and I have eye-popping stats probably, right? You can throw anyone at running back and have eye-popping stats. You can probably throw an offensive lineman behind, you know, and get carries and have 5,000 yards. I'm joking. Obviously not. But you guys get the point. What I'm trying to say is, at some point, you're going to need that workhorse, reliable running back who can take the grind week in and week out. And so far, I'm not sold on Jeff Wilson being 100% healthy for a full 16-game schedule and a deep playoff run. I'm not sold on guys like Raheem Mostert being healthy for a full 16-game schedule and a deep playoff run. Are you? Because if you're going to predict future behavior, you have to go based on past behavior. And past behavior tells us what? Not saying they can't do it, but time has told us over and over again that they haven't been able to do it. Not that they can't, but they have been unable to do it. That's why I believe Najee Harris should be the pick. Bay Bay Area rooted kid. And he would be a nice addition to the San Francisco 49ers. Would get him a facelift at running back. Something they haven't had since Frank Gore. And ignite this offense from a different perspective. Because... If you notice on how Kyle Shanahan's scheming things up, and he's a great offensive genius mind. He's probably top three for sure. Hands down, right? The guy's an offensive genius. I love Kyle Shanahan and what he brings to the table. However, if you notice how he gets runs going, it's always jet sweeps with Debo Samuel, right? End arounds. So that can be a part of spreading defenses horizontally. But then again, when you're going north-south, when you're running these outside-inside zones, you want to have a running back who can actually hit the hole between the tackles. And that's why I see Najee Harris being a smart play there at number 20. That's just my take. You can put your two cents in. I always love feedback. Please drop your comments in the video. I know you guys watched it. Alex Faulkner, you drop a lot of knowledge. JP, you drop a lot of knowledge. Lindy May, you drop a lot of knowledge. And everyone who has been Keith I see you too man Um, 708 Charlotte Bound I see you as well so a lot of you guys have been dropping knowledge I remember you guys and I truly thank you for again 
building up the Beast Rider community and the, not only community but Beast Rider family as we grow this channel together. All right, so that's it for today. I hope you liked what I had to say. If you did, again, and if you have yet to subscribe, if you have yet to subscribe to my channel, please do so in the lower right hand corner of your screen as I stay up to date on all things Beast. Thank you for tuning in. Have a good night. Beast Rider. <laughs>